Neurons make animal life possible by giving a quick biological mechanism of communicating information between cells hundreds of thousands if not millions of locations away from each other. The sheets on axons, the melanin sheets, allow for the faster propagation of signals and without them, large animals would straight up be impossible. The brain or the brain stem or the spine would not be able to communicate with other limbs of the body fast enough in a meaningful way. But how exactly does myelination of axons increase the speed of their action potential? This video will try to explain that. Well, first, let's very, very briefly go over the action potential. This is pretty much the voltage over time graph of the action potential. So we can divide the action potential into four sections. Resting potential, depolarization, repolarization, hyperpolarization, and then we're back to resting potential. It's important to note that only the gaps between the melanin sheets at the nodes of Renovir, you know, these right here, contain transporters. Otherwise, it is impossible for ions to travel into and out of the axon. And here are some typical transporters in the nodes. The most relevant one for our discussion is going to be the voltage-gated sodium channel right here. Again, this is a reminder of what the action potential looks like. So here is a generic axon, presumably of a peripheral nervous system cell. The action potential is right here. You can tell because it's a positive charge at a node of Renovir. To the left of it, as described by our graph, the region is hyperpolarized. And right between the region of hyperpolarity and a positive charge is resting potential, which is about negative 65. And this makes sense, right? The voltage-gated sodium channels would allow for sodium ions to go into the axon and it would create a region of positive charge and of course the positive charge must be negated by an equal and opposite amount of charge. Most of it is located to the left and it's very deeply negative. So much so that it is very unlikely to reactivate the voltage-gated sodium channels again since they need a voltage threshold of negative 55 in order to turn on. And so the effect is that the action potential has polarity. It travels to the right. So to the right of this action potential is also a region of negative charge, but it's not as negative as our hyperpolarized region. It is also relatively small. It barely even makes it to our next node of Renovir. And by then, as we travel right, it becomes more and more the standard voltage threshold. So you may be wondering why this negative 55 millivolts is here when we're going from negative 70 to negative 65. Well, that's because as this action potential grows, it actually attracts negative particles and moves them to the left. This creates um, a sort of parting effect, like parting the, the ion red C. And this creates a region that is relatively more positive because negative 55 is relatively more positive than negative 65 and negative 70 in the next uh, node of Renovir. And the effect is that the action potential jumps all the way to the next node without having to waste time slowly transversing through the gap in between. So we went from here all the way to here. And this phenomenon is called saltatory conduction. And as the action potential travels to the right, you see that the graph this region of repolarization is also moving to the right, and this region of hyperpolarization is also moving to the right. This again helps stop the back propagation of action potentials. So that's a lot to consider, but pretty much electricity only travels in a path of least resistance. It's literally like lightning. There's no reason for the action potential to travel left. It's being blocked off, and it's being insulated from the high resistance of the extracellular fluid. Uh, because of the man in sheets. So this is what would happen if the sheets were gone. Let's uh, just assume the action potential began as normal with this region of hyperpolarity. Well, because the extracellular fluid is actually slightly positively charged and the inside of the cell is, is normally uh, negatively charged, this region of hyperpolarity will quickly dissipate. And the same thing would go for all the other slightly negative regions they would become more and more positive until we get a soup that is near neutral in charge. 
And so really the only region of the cell that would be negative enough to begin the action potential would be the region immediately adjacent to where the action potential currently is anyway. And so by removing the main in sheets, excuse me, we have uh, shortened the distance that the action potential can, can reasonably jump. So here is a comparison of how it was with the main in sheets. The action potential begins over here in this region, and then it jumps all the way to this region and it bypasses uh, the middle section. But without any melanin sheets, the action potential just cannot jump that far. It can only move slightly to the right. And it's even worse than that, because in order to even maintain this concentration gradient with all of these charges coming into and out of the axon, the cell has to spend a lot of ATP on its sodium potassium pumps. So not only is the action potential slower, it's also extremely more pricely and costly for the cell. So here's the takeaway. Mayonnaise sheets create a region of high electrical resistance before the action potential and a region of low electrical resistance in front of it. And this gradient in electrical resistance allows for the faster transmission of the signal. I hope that sort of explained why mayonnaise sheets are so important and why um, you get conditions like sclerosis uh, when your sheets are deficient.